Before we get started, I'd like to briefly explain my seven energy point chakra spread. The cards on the left are the unconscious inner self. The card in the center is the heart. And the three cards on the right are the conscious for self. The card on the bottom left is the base of your spine. It's a combination of many things from past lives to tragic or cherished childhood memories up to the present. We're always culling and bringing new things into our lives and evolving. That's why I'm calling it sourcings and urgings instead of foundation. The second card up is your pelvic or sacrum. And this is awakening or arousing. This is where your spiritual awakening is and growth of all kinds and includes your sexual prowess. This can be a cosmic life breath. The cosmos has natural laws that live in harmony, but we don't always live in harmony with them. The top left-hand card is the solar plexus, or what I consider sensing and feeling. This is where you get those gut feelings about something when they're right or wrong. This is also a universal life force contrary to a cosmic life breath. This is where chaos ensues in our lives. The center card is the heart of the matter or the situation. We're always asking questions. Why did this happen and what's going to happen next? The heart of the matter must connect with the unconscious and the conscious. So we can leave our shadow self in the dust. Another Jungian um, re reality here. And maybe have more of an understanding of what's happening in our lives. The card on the bottom right is the throat, or what I consider communicating and teachings. It has to do with how we accept the rules of society and how we live our life. Are you living a conservative, orthodox life or more of a new wave, do what you want kind of life? The second card up is the third eye, or seeing or envisioning. It's more of bringing things from a linear to a three-dimensional perspective. The third eye is our pineal gland in the center of our brain that's activated by light. So this can also be considered enlightenment. The card on the top right is the crown, our knowing and understanding. You can have a lot of knowledge, but if you cannot apply this knowledge wisely, it's not wisdom. In the past, I used to pull a hidden Rider weight card as I was doing the readings. But for logistic reasons, I'm going to be pull, pulling all of the cards at once and then putting these clarification cards alongside each of the main cards as I'm telling the story of the reading. The subtitles will direct you through this so you don't lose track of what's going on and where I'm at and what card I'm reading. And then on the left, I'll be putting a past card. And on the right, I'll be putting a future card. And on with the readings. Dear Aries, I think you notice that I won't be doing a Messages of the Angel card reading. And in lieu, I'll be doing an associated rune reading to my tarot reading. I like runes. I've had these runes for many, many years. I put them on the back of a miniature Rider weight card so you could see them because they're rather small. And I might have to get some bigger ones because I do plan on doing more rune readings in the future. Now while you're listening to my reading, think of a yes or no question for something that you desire. Because I'm playing a little eight ball game and at the end of the reading we'll see what the answer is. Now I know April was a difficult month or is a difficult month for you. I'm not sure when you're listening to this, but May has a completely different feeling to it. The planets now are in various harmonious aspects to each other, and the commanding energy is air and fire, and air combusts fire, so they're meshing really well. And with this being a ending and new beginning year, I think we've gone through the majority of our endings. Even though there'll be more, I think there's going to be more beginnings coming in the future, and that's going to be quite a bit more refreshing. 
Now, before I get started with your reading, I wanted to point out one thing is that you have the Nine of Cups over in the bottom right for your throat for communicating and teaching. There's been so many signs that have received the Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Cups. It's hard to keep track, but I know Scorpio and Aquarius received the Nine of Cups, and I know Pisces and Aries received the Nine of Cups, and there's been a couple handful of them that's received the Wheel of Fortune too. So everything is lightened up and it appears that everybody's attitude has changed. And everybody wants to move forward with their life. Now let's get into your reading and see what's going on here. I'm going to start with the past because I think it's very pertinent to what's happening in the present and your opportunities in the future. So for the past you received the Page of Cups and the Seven of Swords. Let's talk about the Seven of Swords first. Someone is stealing from you or doing something underhandedly behind your back. Some type of secrets maybe are going on in the backdrop. It's like somebody wants to win a game without playing fair and square. They would rather do underhanded things to win instead of lose and have dignity from loss. But you're diplomatic enough and wise enough to outsmart the sly fox, but you haven't been acting like that in the past because you received the Page of Cups. And he's very immature in his actions and his emotions. And normally he's a little too busy being depressed from unrequited love are falling head over heels in love. Love is his aim and fantasies are his game. And the spiritual world is his plane. He's an idealist, a sentimentalist, and an unrealistic dreamer. And he's usually wearing rose-colored glasses and not seeing things for what they really are and Maybe somebody is stealing from you, but when I see the Seven of Swords, it's normally somebody stealing your emotions. They're the emotional vampire that's sucking you dry. And then again, the Page of Cups can bring news and messages. But sometimes he's more of a gossiper and has an overactive imagination about how he assimilates things. Now down in the base of your spine for sourcing and urgings, you receive the star and temperance. Two major arcana cards. The star is about hope and healing. Whatever happened with the seven of swords and you overlooking things because you're a little too busy with your emotions with the page of cups has made you now want to go into a healing mode. I think the temperance is woke you up a little bit and now you're looking at reality and you're starting to moderate where the page of cups was going off the chart and the star is more of the grounding force here it's it's having you find your position in your little microcosm and on the earth and the star also has you find your position relative to the celestial stars that are constant and fixed. This is a time for you to review where you've been, what you're doing right now, and where you want to go, and what's your purpose in life, and what will make you happy. And this is reinforced by the pelvic and sacrum for awakening and arousing. Receive the Two of Pentacles. Any two is a decision card. Balance partnership. It's time to make some decisions and you're juggling these decisions around and it's time not to drop the ball while you're juggling. But the clarification card is the Eight of Wands. A card of sudden change. Or maybe it's just sudden decision. But the Eight of Wands can also be a message or some type of news. And that can be connected to the Page of Cups, too. So it seems like you've been 
juggling some ideas around and you haven't been quite sure of what to do, but maybe the universe is making the decision for you and very quickly. Now up above in your solar plexus, you receive the Ten of Pentacles, the card of contentment and satisfaction. It's usually considered the retirement card where you have the luxury of comforts, but not all of us are in retirement age. And it just says you are content and satisfied. You might not have all the luxuries, but you have enough that make you comfortable. And the clarification card is the Six of Wands. It's saying that you are a victor in some type of contest or competition and you're doing your honor lap or you're being recognized for your accomplishments. But gravity always pushes you back down to earth and it's time for you to humble yourself and, and go back to your regularly scheduled program. It's time to take on more responsibilities because the center card for the heart of the matter is the King of Swords. He makes rules and regulations, verbal and written for civility. He makes structure and organization. All of a sudden, you're taking control of your life. You had to make some decisions and I think now the King of Swords is making these decisions for you. He's standing behind and watching your back. Now the clarification card is the Six of Swords. And it's a moving on card. It's going from tumultuous waters to more tranquil waters. And this has the same theme as down there in the throat for communicating and teachings. Receive the chariot. He's about moving forward. The whole card is about motion. And it's also about self-control. The chariot card has the military guys to it to remind you that it's about discipline and regulating your willpower. He wants you to be victorious and by overcoming your oppositions. It really is about opposing forces. The Hanson Roberts card really hit it on the nail when they put the yin and yang symbol on the front of his chariot. So it wants to remind you to have self-control versus lack of control. Don't get drawn into the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde syndrome. Because all it's going to do is hinder your progress. But I don't know if that's the problem here because the clarification card is the Nine of Cups. The wish card. And it's been coming up so often and it's made me want to say curiosity killed the cat and everybody forgets the second line and satisfaction brought him back. And the Nine of Cups is about satisfaction, contentment, happiness. And this contentment is reinforced by the card up in the third eye for seeing and envisioning as the Empress. She's the Mother Earth, the Alamada. The nourishing mother of all and symbolizes fertility and creation, love. She's telling you to cultivate your conscious ideas and enjoy what the material world has to offer. But before you do that, you have to go with the clarification card of the Hermit. He's indicating that you have a desire for change in your unconscious inner self before you start enjoying the conscious for self. It's time for you to go on a soul journey of self-discovery. You're seeking guidance from his staff and wisdom from the light in his lamp for enlightenment. The funny thing is at the end of your hermit journey, you realize that you knew the answers all along to the questions that you were asking. Now up above in the crown, you receive the Queen of Pentacles. 
She's about practical matters. She's a pragmatist. She's got a grip on reality. And this is good because the clarification card is justice. And when justice shows up in a spread, it normally means something's been out of balance. Now with the queen's practical stature, she's the one that can put things back into balance and into equilibrium. And perhaps whoever's been stealing from you down there with the Seven of Swords is going to receive the sort of accountability from justice. Now justice can also be about legal matters, contracts, negotiations, agreements that typically are going your way. But whatever it is, your past actions are connected to your present state of affairs. Now we've discussed the past, so let's skip over to the future. And the main card is the Three of Wands. Yeah, Wands is fire energy for Aries. And now you've, you've got your shit together. Things are working out well for you. Three of Wands is a card about movement. You've made some plans and now you're making these plans a reality. And the clarification card was the Hierophant. You might think that's a funny place for having somebody that represents traditional religious teachings or beliefs. But maybe now you understand the beliefs that you have. And you're fueled on some types of truths. You're no longer back at the Seven of Swords and somebody stealing from you and the Page of Cups where your head's in the clouds and you're in fantasy land. All of a sudden, you've accepted what the truth is. So you can go forward with the Three of Wands with the plans that you've made. And I wish you acceptance, peace, and happiness.